Hey, what's up? We are live. Let me check the audio over on YouTube. Hope everything is going well with you and uh, welcome aboard. I have the window open, so maybe a bit of noise coming from the outside. Yeah, okay. Looks like um, the sound's okay. Uh, I'm going to mute myself here. Uh, so yeah, a bit of noise maybe from the outside. My apologies about that. Let me know if it's a problem. I'll close uh, the window. Uh, but in any case, today's going to be another fun one where we react we're gonna react to another video another joseph zbukovich video and this time also alvaro castanet so just super fun uh i don't know i really am enjoying these kind of reaction videos let me know uh if you do too um hello alessandro how are you doing hello uh i'm not sure how to pronounce that you be meli biapes 333 hello hey mark how are you doing uh, good morning, Liron. I watched the Three Amigos video yesterday. It looks like they had a blast and the painting was a success. Yeah, exactly. You know, when I watch this video, it's so funny. And today I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to try and stay current with the chat because I usually don't. Uh, hopefully this time I can. Uh, so I'll always have the bottom of the chat in mind. Hey, Monica. Uh, hey, Henny. Uh, so yeah, it was really uh, an interesting experience watching this video for the first time. Hey, John. Hey, Manette. How are you doing? Thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, watching this for the first time, I was like, how can they create a compre complete kind of conclusive artwork with all of them working together, making a big mess? Um, hey, Alessandra. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, so we're going to let some people um, get in, and then we'll start the actual thing. If you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to ask me. Um, I've been doing a lot of interesting things lately and a lot of things differently than what I'm used to, uh, really thinking about the business side of things. So I've been spending a lot more time uh, working on um, paid ads on Facebook mainly. Uh, doing. Let me move this a bit. I'm um, doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, that, that is a little more, I guess, the, the architecture of the business. Um, and it's funny because I, I'm my motivation to create content is actually super high right now. I'm, I'm, I see this. I see all the cool stuff that I can do and that no one else does. And, and I hope a lot of fun stuff is going to come into this soon. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, things that are just fun to watch, you know? I'm going to increase the entertainment value while hopefully maintaining the educational value. So that's something uh, good to be excited about. Hey, Nameless, you're not nameless to me. You have a name. You're nameless. Uh, hey, Arthur, I enjoyed the previous one with Joseph. This will be good. Yep. Uh, thank you so much. Crystal Martin Art, good morning, Liron and everyone. Uh, thank you for being here, everyone. And yes, um, it's going to be fun. I'm going to listen to some of the feedback from last time, and I'm going to let them talk a bit, and we kind of watch together. Uh, it's interesting how, like, this was basically the first reaction uh, video I did, and it's it always feels like, you know, when I watch reaction videos, I have no problem with the person who's reacting just watching and, and, and very mild reactions, you know? Um, so... <clears throat> So I don't know. I When I do it myself, it feels like maybe I'm not doing enough or I'm not talking enough. So maybe I ended up talking a little too much the last time and not letting them talk, right? Um, so I hope this time can be a little different. Now, I'm going to let the video kind of play in the background here uh, as we begin to... Uh, we're still not... I'm going to mute it, okay? I just wanted to play a bit in the background just for fun. Oh, I can actually hear it, which is a problem. I'm going to mute it for myself too. Um, just to put it in the background as, as I greet you here. Uh, hey, Anayansi, thank you for being here. Warm greetings from Houston. Uh, you're always growing and improving. Blessings. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm doing my best. It's such a, an awkward journey, you know, uh, building my own business, doing this thing that, that has no set direction, nothing paved in advance, right? Um, it's just me doing my thing and inventing things for the first time. Uh, thank you so much, Laura. Good uh, morning to you, too. Hey, Ellen. Hey, Olivier. Uh, like one brain with three instinct arms. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy, right? The way they do this. Um, okay, let's pause here um, and see who else is in the house. And again, uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding the process or anything else, I'm going to let it play in a moment or two. Um, 
and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but in case, let me know what you've been up to. Have you been creating uh, or are you kind of waiting for the weekend to create? I'm curious to see because I've been really prolific this week. I painted a lot uh, and hopefully I can continue that trend. Also really interested in doing more of these huge watercolors too. So yeah, I think we'll just get started. You know, let's begin. Uh, I'm going to play the video. Uh, I'm going to allow the audio to go through uh, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And one more thing I'll mention is I honestly have no idea how the thing with like, I mean, worst case is the live stream gets claimed for copyright and then I can't monetize it, which I don't anyway. Right. So hopefully I just want to make sure that this is I'm actually adding something to the original and not just watching it with you and not saying anything. So there will be some pauses and so on. The most exciting days that we've ever had. I'm standing in Joe's Bookbitch's studio, Joy. Fitzroy. With his I love how, how Graham says Joy with his accent. Good friends, Alvaro Castanet and Herman Pickle. And this is going to be an exciting day because for the first Herman time... Herman Pickle. And you've already put it out, <laughs> it's, it's gone sort of viral. But for the first time, they're going to do a painting, all three of them together. Now, normally the guys will do this on a two-off situation. But you're doing this today with all three of them. So it's the first time. How do you feel about it? Uh, we'll find out. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's... We'll find out. He's hilarious, this guy. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is let me know if the audio is off, if I'm too loud, if the video is too loud, right? Because that's something I can I can fix, hopefully, work on fixing. Uh, Laura says, really enjoyed uh, hearing your thoughts on the uh, last one. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's get to it. Let's go. Sorry. It's a, lot, it's a lot of fun. These guys aren't just great friends. They're also the greatest master watercolor artists in the world. So what they're going to produce today is absolutely going to be mind-boggling for us. But I think we really need to get straight into this. And I think we can probably do some talking as we go along. Yeah. Um, but it's obviously a big piece. It's going to take them a while to do. So who's first up? You know, it's funny. Like, these people give me huge hope for the future of watercolor because i'm like you know i read a bunch of depressing stuff today about watercolor and how it's com considered you know the usual inferior medium stuff this is like <laughs> this is, this is going to be a lot of fun let's get into it nice. <laughs> 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 what are you doing <laughs> <Good Joseph. laughs> With his, his popped collar, that's so funny. Yeah. Actually, this is supposed <coughs> to be serious, but I've decided we're just gonna have fun. That's the way it's gonna be. It's yeah, the best way. Okay. Right, we're gonna start. Who's uh, the uh, first uh, one to start? So it starts this guy. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna be bringing the. We'll, 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 we'll step back and let him get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see yeah. what he does. Well, <laughs> Like one thing to note is that this is a huge painting, right? It's a huge uh, piece of paper. Uh, and that's like, the, I, I'm not surprised he's doing the spraying thing because I, I don't know how you deal with that. The biggest painting I ever did, I think, was about half that size, which is still huge. That's still a lot. But like even my uh, self-portrait was probably a quarter of this size. So, you know, it's just so hard. And yeah, how can you paint with sunglasses? Maybe I'll take them off later. I actually don't remember. But look, I believe in not cleaning the palette. This palette has been dirty. I'm telling for you. Years. It's never I'm had a telling you everyone. So what I do is I actually clean That's the, way the to palette do this. on my painting. Clean the palette on the painting. That's look at that. Just I reckon solved my issue. The colors you leave on your palette turn out to be the best grades you ever mix so you never so have to get on with painting the he sky. gets me that's enough <laughs> <laughs> there we go look at that <laughs> <laughs> look at that that's useful so actually it on. the fact that there are two and one can spray and one can that's useful i don't know what's going to happen are you going to go high, i don't know I'm i just... think it'd be cooler than that well, this, I don't have any green left on my palette. Hang on. We need a sponge. Work our way across. What we're planning is um, dark there, ah! light there. Ah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> hey, you know, hey. That's super common, honestly. The, the thing where all the paint just drips down. That happens all the time because you need so much water just to get the flow and make sure it doesn't, you know, turn out like... 20 million patches uh, so it's so funny hey pounds and dollars how are you doing uh hey patricia good uh, morning everyone watching from 
NH Seacoast. I painted a large painting of a tugboat this week using a limited palette in my watercolor class. Four colors. It was a challenge. Awesome. Uh, and you also add, watch fun, painting with friends. Love the commentary. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hey, best uh, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, let's get to it. Uh, look at this. Uh, this dripping is so this. common. <laughs> Let me know if my ratio of commenting is okay or if I'm annoying. <laughs> So we just work across. Oh, keep this very pale. Stop dribbling on the painting. <laughs> <Stop! laughs> oh God. You know, it's funny. People are so worried about getting the wash to look good and not messing up. It just so doesn't matter. All of these things aren't going to be visible later. And I will add one more thing to it that it's like in this size of a painting, it even matters less because you have more margin of error with large paintings. I'm actually gonna do a video on it uh, Saturday. There's gonna be a video on large painting tips. Yeah, so he likes to keep his watch there. Stop dribbling, will you? <laughs> yeah, Joe loves this because, um... yeah, I get to do all the dribbles. <laughs> this book, which is like the servant, we don't want to do much following here, down, like, so but fun. we can actually go a bit darker there. Yeah, that is the strong blue one. Yeah, I'm going to So, Alvaro, you're just sort of trying to work out where you're going to go. Yeah, 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 so just leave them alone. <laughs> but the people should appreciate him. But a master, he's painting the skies. Look at this. Flat brush. He, he works very quickly. And he ended up with a terrific sky, yeah? So, I mean, how, how do you know what to do? You just, uh, you don't, uh, don't have any uh, idea. Uh, we just do it. Listen to that. That's that should be blue. I know. Hang on. Oh, I'll make a bit of green there. Yeah. That looks nice. Uh, the colors are a mess, you know. That's that's the thing. The colors are are so Herman Pickle style. Pickle. I don't know. Is it pickle? I don't know how to how what the best way to pronounce it is. But like his colors are messy. I find it usually I don't like his color harmonies, but I like his values at, at overall things. So it's interesting. It's really a Herman Pickle kind of color, at least combination. I th I think at least I don't know. Uh, so really, right at the moment, guys, you're just whacking all the background colors in, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yep. you, this, first the, wash. The, Doesn't this, matter. This is we the, just we just put color, and that's why you're not fighting. Lying. It's really hard. Really <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's this size anyway. Right. I can't imagine you're painting on a And also, we were very synchronized. Like what? What size yeah. is that? Seriously, though, is that one on two meters? Something like that, I think. This is actually a very relaxing stage. So it's just basically we're using cordial, different colored cordials, yep. just pale, whatever. So is that how you describe it to your students? Uh, cordial tea, coffee, yeah, whatever. Okay. Yep. Uh, but it's what's going to permeate through the painting and come and out. By the way, let after. me know if you want me to skip some parts or some parts are boring, even though this is pretty interesting, I think. I don't know about the Chinese writing on there. What do you think? The Chinese no, writing ah. should be flattened out. Yeah. Yeah. Look. Yeah. That blue is no good. <laughs> so how, how often should you be using? By the way, look at the wash. Like I have to pause it to comment. The wash is super patchy. That's just the way it is when you paint on this big piece of paper. You know, it's almost impossible, honestly, to get a smooth wash this big. The one way maybe to do that is if you have like a sponge, like a big sponge soaked in water a huge bucket and you pre-wet everything then i can imagine you getting a smoother wash but it's really hard and even with a brush you'll need like something huge you know uh <laughs> oh thank you nancy yeah i'm never annoying okay <laughs> can't wait to see your uh video on bigger paper yeah it's gonna happen soon uh it's gonna be fun i filmed it uh, edited it it's i think it's a good one too in that spray bottle, Oh, uh, generally when it starts to dry, yeah, and you're not happy with an area, yep. you never let it dry. You okay. keep spraying until you're happy. Yeah. Okay. Unless it's too late. Never say die. It's a big it's piece but like you don't that. Think sometimes that it could happen. Money at all? Uh, generally, I'll, I'll let Joe answer that. Yeah. Uh, it won't as long as it's got plenty of water. On it. Okay. You can't. As soon as it dries and goes past a certain point, then yes, okay. you bag it. Yeah, Arthur, definitely. If you wet the back of the paper, that can help. But I cannot even imagine how you'd go about wetting this big piece of paper, you know? Like, how would you do that? Would you wet one side, turn it the other way, and then tape and wet the other side again? I don't know. That's tough. Uh, and hey, Jesse from uh, Iran. Thank you for being here. And hey, White Reza, how are you doing? 
Olivier says they know the interaction of themselves with the others. Uh, wait, yeah, that's interesting because they do go painting together. So I guess the chemistry does exist. But I think the language of art teaching people in exotic locations all over the planet. But you're off to you're off to New Zealand next, don't you, Alvaro? Yes, but I'm going to Cuba. I like the yellow one. So we have we have this foreground white. All right, Jose, you're working on the steeples. Yeah, actually, this is probably the... You know, it's interesting. Uh, Alvaro said he's going to... Sorry, there was a weird noise. Alvaro said he's going to uh, Cuba. I wonder if that's when he filmed the DVD or maybe... I mean, I guess he visits there, you know, frequently, but I wonder if that's that. That could be interesting. I don't remember when this video was uploaded, but I think it, it has a history. Let me try and turn on uh, my lighter. Give me a second. Last time, there were some issues with that light uh, because I don't know why it got too hot and then started flickering. If that happens again, I'll, I'll turn it off. Um, but Patricia said, uh, I paint on quarter sheets, 11 by 15, and feel like that's really large. Yeah. Yeah. So think about that way. I painted on a full sheet, my self portrait, and then my big New York piece was a double that size. I have it here, actually. It's huge. They're probably working double of that, which is crazy. Uh, Mark, that area, yeah, that doesn't worry me too much. Hey, Gorf, Sam, I'm doing well. How about you? Uh, true, that does make it harder. Yep, yep. Uh, slice two, why slice nice? <laughs> Looks like one person is working big shapes, another is working small shapes, and one is blending. Yeah, that and that makes sense. You actually need that for this size. How is the press paper fastened down? It doesn't look like, oh, it's buckling, all right. It is buckling. You can see it. You can see a lot of the waviness. It's just taped, I think, with normal tape. And yeah, base. if this is from 2014, I think that's when he went to Havana to film his uh, Cuba, two series um, watercolor DVD. Interesting. Uh, Tembo Artwork, I'm interested to hear all your comments and thoughts. Thank you for the live. Your time is appreciated. Thank you so much. Yeah, and this is a really kind of entertainment one, not as educational, because I enjoy watching these videos. Let's continue. Just finish this. This will not be changed, I don't think, okay. unless Herman gets to it. Um, Stick a flag up there somewhere. Well, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, this is going to be now a finished product. Yep. And uh, I'm just uh, being fairly careful with that. But all along, I'm worried what they're doing. But there's some pretty dynamic colors. That's a huge right? tower. Uh, uh, Beautiful. Very. But the details don't matter as much as the so silhouette. In, in, in all I of think. the work you guys do is that you really rely on the subtlety of just not covering. The... Mm, I love these windows, right? These windows that hint they're the detail, these empty spaces in the middle. I think that's what they're meant to be. We'll see in just one second, but that is so beautiful. I love that kind of a thing. And it's one of those tricks that, that always make towers look so much better, you know? paint all over you there's oh, the, the white comes through it's the little right bit, bits of white paper are crucial yeah crucial it makes it a watercolor yeah well as you can Ooh. see viewers this is not our normal show where he paints <laughs> but uh it's a privilege to uh to be able to stand here and watch what these gentlemen do without a doubt when it comes to color in the first wash you can do anything yeah it doesn't matter that's okay. true so actually matter. if your white's white yeah you know i thought of nothing to do so i might as well splash a bit of color on that sure so he's just going to sort of maneuver in there. <laughs> there we go. Herman and I have done these before. Alvaro is a newcomer to this game, doing the triple act, I guess. Well, I think that's what's so special about uh, what we're actually doing now, because it's just, and it may never be done again either. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And you know what? I didn't know. I didn't remember Joseph saying that they already did it, he and Herman. So that's very interesting. And I wonder if those paintings were even sold or they're kind of kept in the studio as I wonder about this one. Like, think about it. This is incredible. You know, I wonder where that painting is right now. Maybe it's with uh, Joseph. Maybe it's, it should be in a museum somewhere, honestly. So good. Hey, A. Is, uh, Irizari, I uh, love your work. Thank you for the live. Yeah, you got it. It's my pleasure. This is a cool artist collaborating on the same painting. Yes, indeed. 
Uh, I don't think I ever did something like uh, that. Well, I just can't More than likely not. Yeah. Uh, but I was not at to... least not like that. I do have a collaboration with um, Denise from In Liquid Color that I sent her a sketch. She sent me a sketch, but that's different. Just let the painting <coughs> do, do it. Yeah. She was worried what we're going to say and do and whatever. But the funny thing is the painting just seemed Joseph's to Grays. Uh, I'm sorry for the production team that we have to work so fast, but it's the only way you can do this yeah. is to actually do it really quickly. So we're going to put another wash here. If, if you yeah, over so. the top. Yeah, but yeah. It ended up being quite a long video, so I don't. It shouldn't be worried about that. But it's great production, by the way, these the color in your life. Thing to see the juxtapose between, you know, obviously three 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 different styles trying to work on the one piece. Well yeah, but yeah, yeah the painting <clears throat> will take over though. You'll find that the Look, Herman's gonna troll trolls Bookvich. He's gonna annoy him now. Painting will just simply take over. Who did that? Who did that? <laughs> oh mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. No, not too much of it. Which is too much. He always does that. <laughs> then I have to redo it. This is a fairly iconic scene in Melbourne. Whereabouts is it for us? Look at the tower on the right, the rightmost part. That's so nice the way it's blended together. I love that kind of a thing, you know. Um, let's see. Uh, Pam says, I've soaked full sheets in a tub 10 minutes or so. That gets both both sides wet equally. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I guess if you have a big enough of a surface, you could just put it there afterwards. Uh, uh, Arthur says, there's another one with Joseph and Alvaro making a huge painting together. I believe it was in China. They... We're painting a motorway with cars and taxis underneath it. Interesting. So I'm going to look that up right now because I want to see if that's a thing. Never heard of it. Sorry for the quick pause because I want to watch it. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, I see it's kind of a different... Probably uh, not as production value as, as the color in your life one, yeah. Um, Jesse says, uh, Jesse from, I skipped that, but from Iran. Oh, or maybe I read it, I don't remember. Uh, if you have to pick just six colors to paint with, which do you pick? Just the Daniel Smith essential set. So it's two blues, two reds, two yellows. That's the one I always choose. I'm so boring with colors, you know. But yeah, that's my favorite one. Oh, well, we were going to, we decided to pick something. By the way, if anyone hasn't watched the video, you want to watch it later, like without me interrupting, just I have the first link in the description box is the video. Generic. Yeah. That, you know, was sort of a fairly subject that, you know, everyone has painted. Yeah. Uh, it's actually in um, a, Flint, a Swanson Street looking up the Flinders Street station. Okay. And yes, it, it is what very makes, much an iconic. It's and yeah. and, Holes in the back. Yeah, I actually know this view from them. Uh, I've seen Joseph's paint this a few times, I believe. Grand. I love how when Orman says painted, he says painted. Yeah, it's like man, so fantastic. Yeah. What, what about if we if we take just a minute away and we contemplate it? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of done here. Yeah. Just... This should be really soft. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sort of how often, particularly with watercolors, do you step back and have a look at what you're doing? Uh, you actually yeah, should be doing that all the time. Yeah. yeah, I'll start doing this building, you do that building. Or Joe can... What do you want no. to do, Joe? Uh, that is into the light. Well, you do that section. Uh, I think I've been working on this section for too long. I don't want this to look just like me. I should go over there and you should go here. Do you want me to do this? Yeah, you do that. That's smart. Switching and then the style, their styles are going to be in both places because right now it's like super gray on the right, super uh, colorful on the left, which I like the colors actually on the left. And that's more of a Herman thing. So it turns out maybe I like his color combinations. Alessandra says he's talking Cockney. <laughs> yeah, is that the, like an accent? I'm not sure. It's funny. And, and right. The light goes there. Uh, let, me, uh, let me work it's on the dark here. Dark, okay. Yep. Just go and have a look at the iPad. I've got to find the, um, the reference photo. He's <laughs> somewhere there on an iPad. Actually, that's another thing. You're actually using an iPad there, Herman, to... Uh... Yeah, okay. I'm going to have to add. I'm going to remove this for a second. Play through the ad. was waiting for that to happen there we go 
moved on with the times. So I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, I used to be computer illiterate until about a, a few months ago, and now it's fantastic. I've ever heard that. <clears throat> I'm doing the corn spread lights, those lights that are all around Melbourne. What does it look like that? Focusing really closely yep. and get the detail. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, the, it's the best thing ever. More sort of technology combined with tradition right there. Okay. I don't know why it looks like that. Let me try and fix that solo. Okay, yes. That, like that. But how do I switch? Yeah, there's a chirping birds. That's funny. Oh, okay, okay. I know. Wait, remove, put this, add to stream. And that's so annoying. That is so annoying. There we go. Yeah. I've, I've got somewhere here thousands of slides, which is how I started. This is good. Yeah. Um, started with slides, first with terrible little Polaroid. Some wet and wet. Yeah. Then slides. And now I just use the iPad. So all the slides are just sitting there. Yeah, it's so useful that one person can do the big shape and then another person can do the wet and wet. By the way, I don't use an iPad for my references, though sometimes I should because it's more convenient because my Mac won't fit with large sheets of paper on the table. And basically, you can take that. The beauty about it is you can take it anywhere with you, too. Yep, yep. Anywhere. Teach with it. You can have thousands of photos oh, that's on nice. it. I like Close in. But also the funny thing is we don't need perfect really, timing. Um, extremely sharp photos. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a, a, a certain degree of agitated to it is good for us. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Oh look at that! Oh, oh, beautiful oh. colors. Love the colors. And you can tell there's a great deal of homogeneity here. Homogeneity? Homo homogeneity, yes, yes, because <laughs> the color I love is a color scheme that is working really yeah. well for us here. Yeah? <laughs> it, and it's amazing. We are just acting like hey, Daisy. Being too intuitive. <laughs> Is that the first time you've seen uh, this kind of a collab? Interesting. Hope you're doing well. And yeah, thank you for being here. Base says, uh, have you ever heard of Young Lin Lia? I watched yesterday, but it's in Asian language. I don't understand. I think I think I know them. Young Lin Lia. Lai Yung Lin, I think. Lai Yung Lin. I'm familiar with uh, Lai Yung Lin. Let me know if that's the person you're talking about from Taiwan. So probably Taiwanese. Um, there are a few of these channels out there that are t in Taiwanese and Chinese, and then I don't understand anything. So yeah, that's a shame. <laughs> uh, the first time I've seen something like this. Yeah, so it's a super fun. It's a super fun video. And Daiji, the first link in the description box is the video itself. So you can check it out later. Uh, there we just, I feel I got the urge of going strong somewhere. Here. <clears throat> I don't know why it's so but hot in here now. Look, look at this. Okay. <laughs> this is a stop over here. Like I said, like I said this has never been done before. That was great. Look. Look at that. It's, it's a lot of the time, it's sort of what you leave out with watercolour, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, totally. Totally. See, with watercolours, you're always under pressure. Always under pressure. It's so true. All other mediums can take your time. But everything here is a matter of seconds. Yep. Well, look, the painting is, is acquiring a greater shape now. The only thing we are, the only problem we are having now is both sides of the big painting we are doing, they have similar values and similar strategy as far as brushwork and, and, and they're the, competing. The to it. So, what Herman and, and Joseph are doing is creating a dichotomy between the focal point that is obviously the, and the Flinders Street station versus the right hand side, where jo Joseph is working here, even though he's dropping more pigment into it, he tried to diminish that area versus the other one. The other one, where we put the darkest darks, look at the building. That That's actually a hit. great point. You see? Uh, so, we need to create the dynamic, the polarity that art is in art is a necessity, is, is, is the con that contradiction. So, one thing I'm going to touch on Saturday is how it's very hard to maintain a balance with large paintings. You have to really follow what's going on on paper and really recognize, like, what's, um, what's the focal point or focal points. And when you paint large, 
you can go into so many details that sometimes it's misle it's very hard to define one as a focal point over the other so you end up with like six focal points all equal which is this is a huge risk of you know who cares right you can have 20 focal points and it's still fun but if you want the whole thing to look super clean together and like really have the viewers stare at it it's a good practice to have one really big focal point over the others and it's really hard to maintain with this big of a piece because like it's huge you know uh so yeah just an interesting point uh trying to loosen up the right side i guess and make this more of the focal point i might i would have maybe chosen to do it the other way around and go with the left as the supportive role and the right as the focal point i don't know so we are going darker there on the on the focal point a little uh, lighter here and uh the that next uh, thing we're, the we're, we're pulling the painting together the next thing we're gonna do the big shadows then then the cars casting shadows within the shadows as well and all the figures joseph is gonna do all the figures here he's very good at it so that's where we are doing alvaro is humble he's good at shadows too hey luis how are you doing thank you for being here now it's a race against the clock that's what the music says it's funny oh okay that's nice so one thing that i think was indeed lacking there is this you know the entire ground was light so now they're really turning it into something and you see these three people on the right that's gonna if you haven't watched the process that's gonna be them which is really nice looks really good you'll see <clears throat> The photo is so much more boring than what they did. I love it. Bit of warmth. But notice how nothing is like completely boring black color. Or like completely opaque. Even the shadows are transparent. That's really important. <laughs> The pressure is on. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's that looks just like <laughs> he moved his head. <laughs> that looks just like opaque or yellow straight out of the tube, I guess. Hope you enjoy this one, Patricia. I'm not really necessary to clarify what they're doing, but thank you. Yeah, I, I, maybe a bit technique wise or like how I can relate to it. I wait for the cars on the left to get more details. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I think they jumped. Okay, Joe, well, ahead a bit. where are you going to take it from here? Well, we've discussed it a little bit and we feel we need to unify yeah, the, the yellow cab is awesome. So some of it will have to be softened, like these uh, buildings here. Some of it will have to be strengthened. And of course, the next move is detail. So detail. we're just discussing where to put the figures and so forth. But the main objection, uh, objective to children, of yeah. <laughs> doing a piece like this He's like the adult. is to unify it. So you don't have this many yep. small paintings together, or at least not two or three. It has to work as a unit all over. Honestly, this size of painting, I think it could just be two paintings together. When you're painting this large, I think you have the privilege of... Uh, having it as two separate paintings, I think, you know, um, because in any case, it's not like you can perceive the whole thing together. You're kind of moving left and right to look at it. But, you know, I guess that's the Joseph's always aspiring to have the painting be like finalized and, you know, like really have that final touch that makes it God tier <laughs> the way he paints. Uh, Louis says, interesting how they do identical styles above their unit. Yeah, they, in some way they're, they're all kind of changing their style to match the rest in a way. Would it be interesting to know what happened to that painting? Definitely. I'm curious. I'm curious to hear. Maybe I'll uh, ask them and see if I can get a response. Just to know. An hour, an hour will be spent pulling this together as one piece. Because it's three of us, we've been working on different sections a lot. So now it's time to sort of look at it together as one piece. Sounds fabulous. Okay, well, let's, yeah, let's, let's get, get let's, let's get the other crew in there. Those buildings are just a little bit too strong and compete too much with what's really the interesting part, which is Turn the church and the street. Yeah. So Herman is now softening that up a little bit to, to give this uniform look. 
your eye will just simply travel through the picture without being stopped by these uh, exactly. monolithic uh, things up there. Lemon knows what he's doing. So, no, I don't. No, uh, I don't. <laughs> no. Uh, Lemon is the best designer of paintings ever. Uh, maybe we can talk about the three kind of positives that we bring into this. Other obviously is you know, the stroke man, the strength is just incredible. Except that's meant to be bloody yellow. No, I'm gonna go into yellow. No, 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 Here we go. Here we go. Herman is the best designer. Yeah, I heard uh, Joseph, I think it, maybe it was in this video, I, I don't remember. He says that Herman can make a painting out of like barely any details and there's nothing there in the composition. He just makes it into an interesting painting. No paintings are known. There is no one in the world that can put a painting together and make it work the way he can. It is, his design is impeccable. I, I guess, come in with detail and finesse and I, I can do some little things and very fine, refined can do bits, more than that. that most people sort of tend to neglect. Uh, it's just a little thing of mine, that's all. <coughs> so, without further ado, let's let's finish this. Where is the no, 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 I promise. Where is the bloody no, yellow? You, uh, I'll show you another light. That's, light. that's the low no, pressure light. part yeah. where I you can just do whatever. Ah, I look at it. It's, it's uh, ruined this. No, no. <laughs> It's like a chicken house sometimes. I don't know what <laughs> no, let me do it. Where's let the yellow? Uh, I mean, the shoe <laughs> shop. You know, if you ever wondered what shoes they're wearing, there you go. Uh, by the way, if anyone has information on what happened to the painting, I'm actually curious to know. Uh, but yeah. Herman, do something. I like your way you've softened those buildings off there, Herman. Yeah, yeah. just a bit of... Um... Like right now, I'm wondering, what's your favorite point spot in the painting to me i'm not sure i actually i think i like the cars the best and then the the tall towers that uh Zbukvich put there i think that's my favorite i don't like the dome as much it's a bit messy um i like the building to the right of the dome i guess i just i'm a, I'm a big uh Zbukvich fan i suppose and let me know what your favorite is uh almost milk basically just milk is that so? You're just sort of just going over the top with a white. Right. Yeah, a bit of white. It's just, it's just a little just, thing of mine. Almost milk. Okay. Just used humble. Use Is that right? But he okay. didn't use milk. He used tea. Definitely. All right. Speaking yeah, the of, cars look there's nice. three of us here, so I'm going to start uh, painting us. The three amigos. So here's an interesting question for you. Like, who would you like to see do this? What other painters? I'm curious to hear that. That's actually interesting. Like who, if you could have anyone do a painting together, I, I wonder who I would like to do that. Uh, Mark says the railing and the and the bridge. Yeah, same for me. I really like that area. You know, maybe the, just the cars beats that. Tall spires, yep, yep. Uh, it's finished. That's good. It's really good. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> this paper is lovely to work on. It it's is. Good. It's um, Archer's uh, rough. It's Archer's beautiful rough. stuff to work on. 300 GSM, is that right? Yep. It's probably a bit heavier because it, it comes in a roll. Maybe it's 600. Okay. So you just sort of, sort of just oh, dropping a roll. little bit of color in here mm. and there. Yeah, but it's the yellow that's over there is yep. quite strong. You see, now they pulled it together. Now they managed to pull the painting together, I think. Um, the left section really fell into place, and the background really fell into place. So you have those odd blue buildings on the left, which is something that happens to me a lot, but that's really, like, now it works. Hey, John, how are you doing? Uh, just says Sergeant Goyan Monet. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. That would be crazy. Yeah, I definitely have something with Sergeant. Oh, yeah. And the cab. Yeah. And then here there was none. Okay. So, uh, Notice how the shadow in the bottom foreground really unifies the whole thing. That's really nice. That shadow ties together the the right side of the bridge, the figures, the car, another figure. It's just so good, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit of yellow. Oh, what a, that's a masterpiece. Just, just you know, so good as yellow yeah. as well. <laughs> Look at the so, cat. Right. <laughs> Mate, it's, it's good. as good as you'll get. As good as you get. Joe, what do you think of this? Yeah. If we spray this, get a few runs. Yes, it looks yes. a bit chalky. Do that, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fix it. I mean, do
Just right, looks a bit right. looks a bit yeah, ugly. I agree. Yeah. Love to see a few runs. Yeah, oh, nice. And I don't even mind if they run it down over the bumper no. bar. Look yeah, at that. Exactly. Uh, it's good. Look at that. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. Uh, you know, this spray, just shows you, like, they have incredible skill, of course, years of experience, but a lot of the things that allow you to actually apply all of this is the the freedom and looseness, you know, the, that courage. Like right now, this idea, let's let the, the, the cab run down, all the yellows. You know, you need, you need to, in some way, almost like trolling other people, you need to be able to just be ready to destroy the painting at any given moment. That's like the, the, the definition of courage to me. It's like you're prepared. You're okay with the completely destroying it. You know, that's so funny the way they do that. You and, and Andy Evenson, that's interesting. Yeah. Let's add another person to the mix, like three artist combinations. I'm curious to see uh, what you'll say. Ted to thank. Hey, how are you doing? Hope you're enjoying this one. I guess you joined now, so hopefully you'll enjoy watching it later. Yeah, the kitty is so hilarious. I don't, I didn't know. Get any rush. Is it, it's Joseph's studio, oh, sorry, but I didn't I, know he has a cat. That's pigeons outside. Yeah. 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 There's so much happening in this painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to make these three figures that little bit stronger because they're sort of blending in with the background. See, they're still so improving it. Very strong dark here. <clears throat> over a nice and strong. Look at him. Give him a tie. Look at the cat. Well, he's really out in the town. Yeah, really make him strong. Yeah, he, he faded off. What we can also yeah, do good. is make the lights on their shoulder a little smaller, bit. smaller, see? It mm. come yeah, exactly, exactly. I, can, I, can do that. I like it that way too, but yes, that way. He can do that. <coughs> Bring more focus to the darks, I guess. And that to the lights. Sorry. You get a lovely strength in there. Yep. Well, watercolors are not what you put in, but what you leave out. That's it. Thank you, Karen. Happy yeah. you're enjoying I think you were talking before, he was talking before about pulling the paintings together. Yeah. I think that it's important that we put a line. Actually, who is very good at it? Herman. 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 Well, put the line in. Uh, <laughs> oh, so that's going to be like a, a dangerous line to put, like a super long line. And this brush is great. It has a heavy base, I remember it, so that you can do a lot of water capacity, but thin, thin line. By the way, look at the, how the sky turned out. I love that from dark blue to light yellowy. Kind of, I love that combination. Spray brush, it's got Alvaro Castanet written on it. Designed by Alvaro, for Alvaro, to use by me. <laughs> so what do you want, mate? Where do you want? Where do you want? No, I, I, I thought, uh, I, I, go up there. Also, let me, yeah, wanna go there. And the other one is smooth, the diagonal towards <laughs> oh, the stage. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah, where do you want me to go? <laughs> From here? No, no, hang on. It's smooth, the diagonal like this, going into on top of it, and then let it fade away. Yeah, that's it. It's done. Signing. Important. It's actually fun to have three signatures in one painting. I wish they do it in different colors. I thought I didn't remember. I thought they each sign in different colors, you know. Okay, we got to pause on that. That looks really neat. Now, I think the picture doesn't do it justice because earlier in the video, the values were a little more on point. Uh, some of the colors are lost here, but this looks amazing. So now what's your favorite spot? I wonder. I'm going to scan this for a few moments and figure it out. I think I really like, I think you can see when I do this, this area I also like a lot in terms of the, all of these lines, the horizontal lines and how they combine with the cars. And then these spires and everything, definitely a favorite area of mine. But I don't know. I'm curious to see what, what do you think of that end result. Patricia says, you, Andrew Giesen, and Paul Clark. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. That's an interesting combination. Um, amazing. The painting, painting blends together well. Yes, indeed, the cat is unimpressed for sure. <laughs> 
Yeah, I love the spars too. Yeah, and that's a very. Uh, I think it's the same scene that Joseph painted on, in in the previous video we reacted to. I think it's the same kind of um, building from a different angle, you know. Um, Herman sometimes spits into a drying wash to create texture. Would have been a nice addition. Yeah, funny. Uh, I think uh, Alvaro also does that. Uh, Henny, the three artists in there have to be the highlight. Yeah, the, yeah, I think so. They, you, they could have brought them out a little more, I think. By the way, I never spit on my painting. I don't know. It's weird. Everyone likes this area. Yeah, definitely. We have similar tastes. It's funny. Let's hear some concluding words. Okay, guys. Words. What an amazing day. Fantastic, gentlemen. I cannot thank you enough. Joe. No worries, mate. Alvaro. Thank you, mate. And Herman. Thank you. Three great master watercolor artists of the world. And that's the first time that they've ever been together in a, in a trio to paint such an amazing piece of work. I mean, that was just a mind boggling. You know, that's historic. Like Graham and his show is so good. The way he's visiting different artists is such an, an art, artpreneur, artpreneur. I don't know how to say that, but like he made history with this video and scene. <clears throat> like truly history. Day. But thank you so much for having us in your studio, Joe. It's just absolute pleasure. It's always a delight to pleasure. see these guys. Pleasure. They're absolute gentlemen. Uh, they really are the pinnacle of what watercolour art represents in this world. And thank you so much for, <coughs> for doing this for us as well. Um, once again, I'd like to thank Luke Senior from Seniors Arts and also Daniel yeah, Smith. It's a huge painting. If it wasn't yeah. for those gentlemen and their companies, uh, thank for them today. You, them, and I guarantee you. Definitely this... check out the Color in Your Life channel. If you haven't, subscribe. I think they also have a Patreon, so if you want to support them. Thank you so much. We're going to head off back up north again, guys. Thank you. And bye. See you, guys. Yeah, so that was super cool. Let me pause on the... This, this is a nice little frame. <laughs> so, yeah, I love that. And Monica it definitely belongs in a museum. I also think so. I mean, not enough watercolors in museums. I remember seeing a few of uh, Picasso. That was like probably some of the only watercolors I've ever seen in a museum. Picasso, and there was, um, I think, one by John Singer Sargent. But that's going to change, I think. Sebastian, uh, you missed some of the live, but we're still going. So feel free to you know give your input on this painting. I posited the right frame. Let's see if I can do it a bit different. Not like this, but how can I show both like even size? Earlier it worked when I didn't want it to be that way. These layouts are annoying. Maybe if I do this. Yeah, it's not going to do what I want it to do, I guess. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, uh, just a fun process. Very difficult to control something this size. And I think, yes, it is funny to think that they um, it's three people, so you'd think it will be harder. But actually, I think it played to their advantage because to paint this huge of a piece, you need to have, uh, you know, few people. Uh, hey, yeah, Jesse, I, I know uh, Javid Abtabai's work. He's, it's really, really good. I love it. He has some processes that are so nuanced with the blue colors and stuff like that. It's so good, you know. Uh, let me know. I think we still have time. If you want me to go over another video, just let me know. I can do that. I think we can cram in another one or we can just chill and talk art, whatever you want. Um yeah, I definitely think that reality of watercolor changes. Um, the more people master the medium and the more it's it's already huge. Uh, I know in China and in the East Taiwan as well. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's it's going to improve with time. White Reza, definitely we should build a watercolor museum. Basically, that was fun watching with others. Thanks for the great live stream. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. By the way, I could use this opportunity to ask you. Oh, Picasso Museum in Barcelona has a few, but not the predominant. Interesting. Yeah. I think it was in um, one of the museums in New York. I don't remember which one which one it was. Um, but yeah, I'll go over Javid's video. Let's see. Uh, painting a huge ship. Okay, let's find it. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a second so that I can find a video. 
to read to buy a uh, boat ship was it a ship or a boat huge ship let's see I don't know if that's the video you're referring to, but that's the first one. Oh, big format. Okay. Let's see if this. I'm going to let Ruth leave the studio. <laughs> Let's see if it's this one. Wow, that's incredible. There are actually a few videos. Let me know if you talked about a specific one. Thank you, Sandals. <laughs> One second. Um, there's quite a bit of John Singer Sergeant Water Yep, yeah, yeah, I saw some too. Uh, let's see, big format, big format. So there are actually quite a few of these. Let's just choose one. Let's go with this. This is nice. I'm going to mute. There's no, like, talking. Uh, Share screen, share screen, so big format, share, there we go, okay. So I'm going to share this one, mute it, because again, there's no like um, talking or anything like that. Should I run it faster speed? I don't know, it's a short video, let's just watch it like that. So this is going to surprise you, actually, the way this painting ends up. If you haven't watched the process, because I just I skipped ahead just to see how it ends up looking. It's incredible. He's so good, honestly. Um, he has so many good um, videos as well. Let me... I just want to check something here real quick. Sorry about that. I'm going to remove that for a second. Okay, we're good. So he basically sprayed water all over the painting. Okay, this is one. Okay, good, Jesse. I'm happy. I got the right one. Yeah. So he sprayed all over it, and then he's painting that it's it's basically a seascape with boats, but the boats are the ships. Sorry, ships are very subtle in a way. You'll see, and he actually manages. Look at the size of that bucket. He actually manages to get an even wash because he pre-wet and the bucket. That could be interesting. That's definitely something I'd like to try and do. The boats here are a ship. Sorry, not boats again. The ships because there is something that looks like a boat in addition, but. They're very subtle. So he's a master of making scenes that are very subtle. And then you look at them and you realize how much depth they have and how much how much details they have too. That's one thing I noticed. Look at how wet the paper needs to be. And yeah, the freedom to move it around. That's really, really important. <coughs> Honestly, I'm not even sure. That's a canvas. I don't know. If you have any information about what this is made of, it looks like almost, yeah, it does look a bit like a canvas. Not a paper, not cotton paper, but maybe it's paper that's wrapped around a can, you um, know, wooden frame or something like that. I'm actually not sure. And that brush is crucial because you need something big enough to paint these big of washes. You know, I wonder how this size compares to the to the one we just saw. It doesn't look like half. It looks like maybe two thirds. In size, I'm not sure, honestly. Paper on a wood frame. Yeah, that's what I think, too, but I don't know. I honestly don't know. Jen says, I've seen this one. It's so good. The color starts out so strong, but it's amazing. Yeah, th that's actually, you need that strength. So something from it will stay all the way till the end, you know? Patricia says, the closest thing I've done... Like this is a painting, an ocean-themed mural. Oh, cool. Yeah, murals are tough with others that are wildlife refuge where I'm a volunteer. So, Patricia, I think I think you shared it with me via email. I'm not sure. I remember seeing it, but I'm not sure if it was that one. Let me know. Um, Tattoo Tank, I've done a few of his paintings. I watch him and followed along. I can send you to tell me how bad I did. 
I'm sure you did fine. So feel free to send them, definitely. I don't remember if you ever sent me a painting. Feel free to. Yeah, that's the the flow is there, but the way it buckles looks like paper. It doesn't look like a like a canvas, but it this size. Who knows? You know. That's really interesting. The way he's able to maintain that flow is so good. I'm going to tilt it to get the, the thing going. That's so good. I love the idea of us just watching a bunch of <laughs> videos together. It's fun. Look at the boats in the background. It's so subtle. I mean, if it's ships, it's a fleet. It's like war. War in the, I don't know, I guess 1400s or 1300s or I don't know when. But yeah, it's okay. It looks like it's a dock. That's insane. The way he brings out the depth and details, and it's pretty monochromatic. Like, I mean, it's not monochromatic per se because the the there are a few colors, but it's still quite, you know, on the same range, which makes it a little easier to control at this size. You know, that's really tough. If you want to paint a scene like that, that actually has some parts of it, you know, um, that actually has some parts of it that are overarching, like the ocean is completely overarching, right? <laughs> Covers everything up. You have to... That's insane. You have to, in a way, limit your colors, I think. That's really insane. I love that. That's so good. It just pops out the painting. It's too bad he doesn't show a lot of the details he did later on, but that it really does show like the control of the big format, which is super tough, you know. Um, spray looks really crucial here. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And I think also just pre-wetting in general and whatever means you have. Uh, D says hello from Iowa, just joining in. Welcome aboard. Uh, Mark, it looks almost as large as the first video. Imagine two other people working beside him. Yeah, but it is smaller. I think it's considerably smaller, you know. Uh, Ted, love his value change with one color. Yep. Yeah, yeah that's really incredible. It's such an interesting, like, all the details on the ships is just... Wow, and the way they blend, right? You see how they blend into the to the right. That's so good. Yep, great process. Let's do another one. That's fun. Let's do another one. Uh, let me know if you want me to do one in particular, <coughs> and we can do that. Um, he has a couple of very interesting ones. Let's do another one by him. Um, this is another big one. I'm going to share with you in just one second. Let's see here. Okie doke. Yeah, he's, the, the subtleties in his work is so interesting to see, you know, the subtle value transitions and shifts is fascinating now look at the setup here this is already built for not like not a super and by the way i see it works the same kind of thing it looks again like a watercolor paper stretched on canvas you know olivia says paper and canvas agree to be still wet with adding water by the back of the yeah so i wonder again i wonder what this is if you have any information i'll reach out i actually want to ask him um uh, i think he'll answer i don't remember if we ever like talked before but um I'm going to write a note to myself because I have a couple of things to uh, to find out about uh, paper. And then I want to ask Amigos about painting, where it ended up. Maybe I'll, I'll have answers for you. Ended up. Because these people are really nice, you know, some of them answer in messages and so on. But the setup, if you look at this, it really is made for big watercolors. You see there's two bowls or two, you know, whatever that is. So you can really mix different, I guess, clean the brush in different mixes if you want one warm, one cool. The palette is 
big enough so that you can you know you have enough mixing area uh and this is for a a paint the previous one he had a bigger palette that i think this one is a bit of a smaller paper so it makes sense let's see if there's talking i don't think so yeah it's just music um but yeah he uses that as a mixing area that's smart and the paints are probably squeezed right out of the tube um just so that they're easier to mix a large quantity of because that's a big struggle with big paintings like to mix the large quantity that's a, a huge challenge you know we're going to talk about that on sunday's video as well uh hey lollipop how are you doing um john what was your process with your latest big painting i liked your self-portrait because it was so casual it was a fresh take on a self-portrait yeah um i had a similar process the one thing i didn't do which i did in another large painting is using a just a cup of water not like glass but plastic cup and i put i, I squeezed paint out of the tube and added water and mix it in the cup so that i have a big mix of dark paint because you need a lot sometimes like a lot of paint and it's very hard and it takes a long time to mix so if you can have a strong mix or a few cups with different mixes it can save up a lot of time especially for these huge washes um and plus you just have to kind of accept that your washes are going to flow less one more thing I mentioned, and I'm, I'm going to talk about it again on Saturday's video, is I didn't take the paper at all. Just placed it on the table, and once it dries, it flattens. It's okay. You don't have to tape it when it's this big. It just worked well for me. I tilt it. I move it around any way I want. Don't need a board. Don't need to tape it to the table. It just works. It's funny enough. Uh, Monica, thanks, Jeroen. Would uh, like to know where painting went. Yeah, I'll find that out for you. Uh, if I asked him a few questions, never answered me. Just thumbs up. Uh, uh, who, Javid or any of the other artists? Let me know. But I'll get them to answer me. Uh, hey, Charnel, how are you doing? Hope everything is well with you. I watched Young Lin Lai's Paddy Field demonstration. The process was really interesting. Okay, yeah, we can do that later. Uh, we'll we'll revisit that one. Um, it would be nice to do, to watch another one. Let's see. Let's watch this one. I'm going to do it uh, double speed because it's a bit of a longer video. Just let it run. If it's too fast, I'll slow it down. That's a nice, like the first brush mark. That's so fun. I guess that's where he defines the horizon or something to that. Like some kind of a shape he paints around negatively. Maybe we'll see. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Very wet brush. And you see, even though he's just put it in the water, it still leaves gaps. That's the reality of painting on a textured paper. When it's this size, you know, you have to go at it again and again and again. But I love this. It's a nice way of blending from slightly strong color to very light color. So that's a useful brush. I should get something this this size, you know. Run it forward a bit. It's water, it seems. Strengthening the top while it's still wet. That's really tough to do, you know. I wonder if he's not even spraying and the angle is the other way around so that the light goes into the dark. That's very strange. Okay, so yeah, that's the sky. I get it. It took me a moment to figure it out. But yeah, his cloud technique is on point. So one thing to note when you're doing these kinds of clouds is you really have to work on a wet paper that's starting to dry with super thick paint, like almost out of the tube thick paint for it, for the clouds to stay, you know? Uh, okay, yeah, Javid. Maybe he'll answer me. I don't know. We'll try. And I wonder if you sent him a long question or message you know because that sometimes can you know i get long messages i sometimes skip because i don't have time i leave them in my inbox so that i can answer later but it takes me longer to answer if it's a very simple message I, it's easier to answer yeah so clouds now for the c pre-wetting add let's skip that for a second i'm gonna remove high content creators you know what's funny they're really wasting their money on this ad because i'm already a a paying customer to that service art list they're good i get the music from there but they're wasting their marketing dollars on me and i already have their product that's a really nice yellow ochre i like that a lot 
his color combinations are so different from what I'm used to using, you know, myself. <clears throat> does he live in uh, Iran? Or if, does anyone know? I'm curious. I know he's Iranian, but I'm not sure he lives there. Let's see here. Oh, that's nice. Look at this strong, strong blue. You can actually see where the paint is just straight out of the tube. It's a lump of paint there. I think I think it's a lump of paint. Could be dirt, but but I think it's paint. Very strong on the bottom there. And you need to work fast. You know. This is dangerous territory. Uh, all this wet and wet. He, he's got it. He's got the timing perfect, but it's so tough to do, you know. His skies are always so moody and, and dramatic. You know, I love that. Let's skip ahead a bit. Curious to see where this one goes. Oh, it's outside. Cool. It's just adding that kind of horizon with buildings and stuff. Now he's starting to establish, I guess, the boats or whatever. <clears throat> Definitely a clean line. Yep, that's not easy. You should install an ad block. You know, I'm okay with ads because it helps the creators. I don't want to remove them to it uh, completely. He was in Iran. He migrated to the U.S. Okay. This would be sewing the branch he's sitting on. Yeah, you know, but you know what? Because I don't put ads in most of my videos, so not really, but yeah, I don't know, for other creators. Uh, and your comments are so helpful. So great to hear your explanation of what is happening in the video. I would miss many of the details. Interesting. Yeah, I'm very keen on how they mix usually and how... Look at the, the warm orange within the, the dark. That's, that's a staple of his. I've seen it in many of his paintings, and it's so good looking. It's a way to give the darks some depth. You know, if you just go for a dark, it can end up being boring. Sometimes it needs that push of color and it reads really well. You know, our mind knows to read. And he's a genius of, again, that monochromatic. Oh, I love this. One thing to note when you're painting this way with a unified color, not only the shape you paint, but the negative shapes you leave behind. And these negative shapes here, and I bet you he's going to leave some more here. I don't remember, but I think he will is so important. These gaps, you see these white gaps and shapes that are created by the shapes he's painting. That's very important in these kinds of paintings that are more monochromatic. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a paying customer of that ad too. It's so funny. <clears throat> that orange is so good. I love that. You can feel, look at the, look at the paint here in the, in the bowl. This is straight out of the tube. He's just squeezed a bunch of paint there. And that's important because otherwise you have no prayer of mixing it fast enough, you know, and it's going to be too light and it's not going to be visible. So he just used it straight out of the tube to get it this dark. That's that becomes really important in these size of paintings. Very important. That's one thing I noticed. Look at how thick the paint is straight out of the tube. That's really important. Using a ruler, that's fun. I don't do that much, but I should. You know, all of these tricks really help when you paint this huge size. This angle doesn't allow to see much. This is so good. I wonder if he'll add uh, opaque paint. I don't think so. He's usually working light to dark and that's it. Because he's a master of these negative spaces. So he doesn't need to add highlights, you know. And one thing to have in mind is his his paintings are really his. And it's so, you know, he's, he's breaking so much farther off from the reference photo. I feel like sometimes I'm still trying to be too literal and try and get every detail in the reference photo and it's really counterproductive. Um, Ted says, wasn't long, just can't really remember, but something along mine was grainy and his smooth. Yeah, that's sometimes hard to answer these messages. Um, and someone said it was because I used pen colors and he used tube colors. Yeah, oh, this this relates to what we just said. Like he's using it straight out of the tube probably. Yeah. You need to squeeze five tubes of ultramarine to achieve this painting. That's true, yeah. I, I don't think it's ultramarine though. It's kind of a phthalo-ish gray green, I don't know. So good. Look at the backgrounds on the building on the right. Like that's so interesting looking. Let's skip ahead a bit and see where this goes. 
it's funny how sometimes you skip ahead and all of a sudden a painting shows up, you know, that you didn't even notice. I'm looking for a good angle. Can't find it. Something up close, you know. Yeah, that's really nice. So I wonder, that's just dry brush, I guess. Or is he wetting? I don't know. Darkening even more. That's such a neat format, you know, working like this horizontally. That's so good looking. You know, one thing I will encourage you with tomorrow's video, uh, Saturday's video, is you can paint this big. I know it looks tough, but the, the fact of the matter is there are a lot of ways around the challenges. So you can get it done. You can paint in sections. You can do a lot of things. Um, so I wouldn't worry about giving it a try, you know. You'll be surprised, you know, the margin of error as well. Mistakes are less visible when you paint this big. Um, so, and that plays in your favor, of course. You can do a lot of, make a lot of mistakes and it will still look good. And, you know, this is so nice. Let's do uh, one last. I'm going to just skip the ad for a second. And we'll do one, one last kind of process, the, the other one that you asked for. And then we'll wrap it up, I think, for today. Because I just want to give you a view of the finished piece, if I can, and if it's here. Because right now I don't see that he's actually, he's not showing it. Showing it like for one second. Hmm. Ruth came back. Shalom. Shalom, Lach. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Let's see if we're going to get, uh, sorry, I know you can't see it, but I'm just trying to, yeah, he doesn't show it. It's, it's a shame. <laughs> Ruth wants to be on camera. <laughs> you want to talk to the mic, Ruth? <laughs> like, what am I doing here? Shut up. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> so let me add this so that I can show it to you. Okay. Um, here we go. Okay, so one final view of the painting, because he doesn't show, unfortunately. Oh, wait, but I'm going to uh, remove the double speed. He doesn't show it like properly scanned, but here we go. Okay. Let's see. So that's the, the best view you're going to get of the painting. But it's really, really nice. And it's very minimalistic in a way. I like it. There's tons of details, but it's still minimalistic. You see the entire middle section is just empty. Barely has anything. And that's really, really nice. Very nice. Okie doke. Let's do another one. Hey, Ruth, everyone says. Um... Patricia, no ruler for that long horizontal line, but a ruler for a short vertical. Yep. It's funny. My instructor creates smooth lines using rice tape. Oh, interesting. Nothing wrong. Definitely. Yeah, I've seen people just use normal masking tape to get these kind of details. Uh, Bjorn Bernstrom also makes large paintings. Often he doesn't span it, but simply work on a loose... Doesn't stretch, you mean? Loose sheet of... Oh, doesn't tape, maybe. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'll I'll send Ruth your regards because she's already, you know, she looks so great on a wall. Definitely, yeah. Fabulous painting. Yep. Panoramic format. Yep. That's a better way of phrasing it, panoramic format. So yeah, let me do the uh the last one. Um Paddy Field. Let's look at that. I have no idea. I've never watched it, but let's see. Okay. Oh, that looks really good. And I'm going to subscribe because I wasn't. Um, is there talking in this video? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, it's just music. Um, let's do this. Last one for today. Let's see. Oh, it's a time lapse too. That's nice because I'm on normal speed. Our duck says hi to Ruth. Funny. Okay, let's see. A lot of opaque paint. Can you tell? That's a lot of opaque paint. I don't know why. The way it appears on the palette, it's kind of a John Brilliant almost mixed with a bunch of other stuff. That looks so good, actually. 
Wish you could uh, look at Jared Cullum. We can do that next time. Jared Cullum, I think, right? Uh, we can do that next time for sure. A bit of uh, lilac key for the clouds. It's very interesting. So a lot of these artists, Taiwan, especially Chen Chung Wei also, they use a lot of opaque paints. It's very interesting to see. And I'm trying to play around with that too to see what I can learn from that. It's fun. It's a fun way of muting in a way, you know? Uh, Andy also says that taking the edge off of um, very strong colors like that French ultramarine is one of those too. Some yellow ochre kind. Let me run this even a bit faster, but just a bit. Because there's explanations. It's not just... Uh, it's Obviously, it's been filmed when uh, they're explaining stuff. So I want to... I say they. I don't know if it's a man or a woman. Uh, let me know. <clears throat> That's a very nice color combo. Actually, I'm going to try and do a bit of um, opaque, more opaque paint. Because I like the feel of it a lot. Now, this wash is going to be crucial because they're going to establish those darks. You see them in the painting on the right side. This is the time to establish these. I think we're going to see some of that soon. A bit of lifting, probably a bit of spraying and splashing because I do see a bit of uh, lighter spots like they splashed some color. See that dark paint? That's very. That's the that's the opportunity to establish this. This I, I think there will be more. Yeah, I wanted to say I think there will be darker yet because that's not going to stay in there as much probably there we go see i know i know because it's so you need such strong paint to combat the wetness on paper so it's probably going to be even stronger that's it that's it you see that brush mark that's going to stay there probably if you don't go this strong you're it's not going to last and look at how one more thing to have in mind is like with these processes it, when you're doing this first wash, the rest doesn't matter. The house doesn't matter. The details don't matter. What matters is getting these effects now because that's the only chance you'll get to get them. You, once this dries, you can't get these splashes. You can get these wet and wets. It's going to be much harder. So that's the opportunity. And I love when artists focus on the the you know the meaning of the wash. And then later on, you can add the details and everything. But this is like 60% of the painting done or 70 or even more in one go it's very important look at that such a nice wash i wonder how did they get the those blades they skipped that that's a shame they skipped how they got the blades of grass see they're not here and then they're here so i wonder how that was done i'm um, actually not sure it's too bad i don't know if there's captions here i don't think so no so i wonder if it was lifted with opaque paint maybe they added it i'm not sure but I think that's it for the lower part of the painting. They're not going to touch it. Now, one more thing I'll add to that is look at how the green is different in the painting than in the reference photo. And I see a lot of people trying to mix the exact paint they see. And that's um, that's to your detriment sometimes. Trying to mix the exact paint, you end up with a, with a bunch of paints that don't work together. You'd mu you do much better to use your own color. So what do I mean by that? If you see a green, just use your own green. Whatever it is you have, whatever it is you mix, maybe with primary colors, maybe it's a green right out the gate, but like use your own. You see a red, it's okay. You don't have to mix the exact same red. Use whatever red you want to use. And then you kind of follow the temperature, warm, cool, red, yellow, blue, but you're not bound here but you're not bound by the colors you see, the exact colors you see in the, in the scene. Um, that way you can get a lot more freshness and a lot more you know, flow because you're not too caught up in mixing each and every color the exact same way. I like how they're showing the finished results to the side all throughout the painting process. That's nice. Because you look at the result and you wonder how did they get that? You know, there's this... I don't know if it's a group or kind of like you can point to the Australian watercolor painters. That hair is going to bug me. I think I got it. There's this group of painters from Taiwan. And it's not a group. Like, I don't even know if they know each other. But it's like this stream of artists that is just so good. This person, Chen Chung Wei. Jasmine Huang, they're so good and they have the same 
kind of characteristics in a way. They have the, the whole opaque paint thing going, subtle color changes, and not necessarily matching the color, but very subtle color choices. Um, a lot of emphasis on getting the most out of every wash. It, it, just a different work process. And it's really impressive. You know, it's very, like there's a, almost like there's a competition between the East and West. Because um, I heard Joseph Zbukovic talk about it a bit, how these artists are so, like, so skilled. And sometimes they, they're more skilled than what you'd find in different countries. It's it's pretty incredible, honestly. I feel a strong connection to this style. Uh, more than, for example, and of course I'm, I'm generalizing, like not everyone is like that, but you can see some schools of thought. So I feel a strong connection to this more than, let's say, the more common Russian or Eastern European watercolors. Uh, a lot of them have a lot of colorfulness, very strong blues. Um, I find that to be a turnoff sometimes. Maybe because I'm used to it. I don't know. But to me, sometimes that's not the style I like. Um, of course, and again, I'm generalizing. Not not all of them. Um, some, you know, Russian artists or Eastern European artists I absolutely love. Um, but a lot of it is co too colorful for my, my taste. And I actually feel really good with the those subtle color combos that they're using here. A lot of Taiwanese artists, I think. Let's look at some of your comments here real quick. Um, and let's let's lower the speed here a bit. Let's do back to normal. That hair is going to drive the living. Drive me crazy. Um, let's mark this because I will look at Jared Column. And can you remind me if I forget, by the way? Just remind me. Uh, Louis Haleron, can you look at Shibasaki watercolors? Yeah, we can do that next time too. I'm going to I'm gonna uh, mark all your comments and we'll I'll take a screenshot at the end and we'll do that. Because um, I, I want to go over all of these artists. They're great. I love Shibasaki. Um, it fascinates me. Just found this artist. Yeah, I wasn't familiar with them too. Mark says it would be nice if I could paint that fast in reality. Yeah, that would be insane. But I think you'd get bored with the process if you could, honestly. Patricia, always interesting to see brush technique. The clouds were painted using the side of the brush. Yeah, that's that's usually the case. But I don't think it matters as much. What what matters to me is that subtle timing, you know? So good. Uh, John says, tilted the board after splashing with water. Yeah, maybe, but I don't think that's how the blades of grass were done. And I don't know if they were scrapped. I don't think they were scraped. I don't think they were scratched. Honestly, I think it's opaque paint, but I don't know. I'm I'm honestly not sure. I think one could achieve such thin lifting with a toothpick. That may be the case, but honestly, it feels like opaque paint wet and wet. You know, that's what it feels like to me. Opaque paint like John Brilliant and just tuk, 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 like that. That's what it looks like to me, but I don't know. Charnel, you're on. If the time and energy are available, you should do a series where you critique viewers' artwork. Uh, like any of us can send you a picture of our work and you go through. Yeah, and I actually did that. I have like, I critique your paintings. Check it out. And I plan on doing more. I'm gathering uh, more of your paintings. And kind of when I feel like when I'll be in the mood again, I'll do one for sure. Uh, I actually have three, I think, videos like that. Um, Monica, did they tilt the paper to let water splashes run? Yeah, that's a possibility again. Wait for the building. Really amazing. Yep, yep. Paul Clark does it with the back of the brush. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen that too. And some backs of brushes have this thin, like the other edge of the brush has this thin, sharp line where you can do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that may be maybe with nails. Is the way they did it right now. Oh, or maybe with a knife thing. That tells me more than anything. I think that's how it was done. I don't know what this tool is. Let me see if I can pause the video, but it looks like that was the tool used. It's just a knife. Looks like just a knife. That's interesting, huh? So I think that's our answer. Yep, you were right, probably. It was scratched. Interesting. Uh, Patricia, I just painted a barn scene with a large grassy area in the foreground like this, and we used water splatters for the grass texture. Yeah, I love doing that, too. Yeah, I do that a lot. We use a credit card to scrape. I find that doesn't work well for me. Yeah, you're, you're right on point. Individual scratches with a sharp tool. That's what it is. 
Uh, John, I like it when the palette is in the frame of the video because seeing the mixing is important. Yeah, and Chen Chung Wei shows it more. I like seeing the subtle mixes. Uh, let's see. Indeed, amazing. Uh, Tattoo Tank, do you ever go out and watercolor paint like Urban Sketch like stuff? I haven't done it in all, in ages. I keep telling myself I will and I don't. Uh, Patricia, this is exactly how we paint our landscapes with large, smooth washes, lots of water. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, and thank you so much. If you can leave a thumbs up, that helps a lot. Uh, Mark, the trees on the left are a good example of your video about are you falling for those optical illusions? Yep. Yeah, that's true. They're super gray. And they make the, the, the grass in the front is also quite gray. That's not a strong green. And they make it look even stronger, you know? So fun. Now, Jesse, you can get this effect with a toothpick. Yeah, I don't know, you know, maybe also with a toothpick. So let's see, let me run this a bit forward. Let's see. Oh, that's nice. Some subtle orange touches. Oh, now we can see the palette better again. Okay, some touches in the grass too. I can see that in the painting as well. Will I ever be able to get rid of that hair? I wonder. And you see, if you would were to rely just on dry brush like this for the foreground, you'd end up, I think, with a messy foreground. The fact that they got everything in the first wash for the grass is very important. Because once it's dry, it's dry. And then if you have to rely on dry brush, which sometimes I do and it feels a little off, you know, the best way to get it, honestly, is wet and wet. It's just like, how much can you produce out of a wash? How much detail can you bring out just from one single wash? And I think this painting is a good example of how you can change the vault, the the value scheme to make a painting work. Like if you don't like the values, if the contrast isn't strong enough, or if it's too strong, you can change it. Like look at the house contrasting with the sky. In the reference photo, you can see it really well here. In the reference photo, the contrast between the building and the sky is much stronger than in the painting. So they changed a bunch of stuff to make it more interesting, right? They made everything, like the trees to the right of the house, they go very light, smooth edges, even though they don't have smooth edges in the original, they go a little cooler because you see the layer underneath. That's really, really cool. Let's see where this goes near the end and then we'll freeze the video on it. Oh, okay, tape removal. There we go. Let's see the signature too. Let's give it its deserved respect. And signing is, isn't always easy, <laughs> getting the right water to paint ratio and the rigor brush or whatever that is and then let's see if there are a couple of other details added maybe bringing out some lifting out some flowers just to make them a little more you know move forward a bit oh, that's really nice tape removal best moment especially for these scenes you know <clears throat> that's really really good looking thick tape there we go, final result. That's really, really good looking. Let's see what's gonna happen later on. Maybe that's a scan, I don't know. Yeah, this looks really, really good. I love that. Uh, all those, sorry, all those vertical bits make the scene so much more interesting. Yeah, they're very important. Um, Vertical, horizontal too. It just breaks off the patterns, you know. Um, don't know why, but this reminds me of some of yours. Oh, thank you. I think it it reminds me a bit of my Vietnam scene. Actually, funny enough, the with the green fields a bit, a bit, because I had the same muted kind of dark green. Um, what paper thickness would you use? 300? I think 300 honestly works for most uses. If you really want to spoil yourself, 600 gram, maybe for very big paintings, could work well. They, it barely buckles. 
Um, but yeah, it's, even if it buckles, it's not the end of the world. You know, 600 gram is just more expensive. And for most usage uses, you don't need it. That's what I think, at least, you know. Patricia, all these vertical bits. Yeah, we read that. Arthur, I do wonder how the blades were created lifting with a small brush. It looks like a knife. Yeah. Looks like a knife from what we've seen later. Tape removal is the best part, of course. Monica says, nice. Patricia, what was the name of the artist who did the panorama of the uh, river scene with the boats? That's Javid. I'm going to just type it in the chat. Making sure I'm spelling it correctly. There we go. I remember discovering Javid's work. I think it was like, um, oh, it was a beautiful scene. Um, it was like um, a desert scene with people. And the desert was completely monochromatic, kind of green gray, like the one we've seen. And the people were colorful. It looked so good. I remember that. Uh, but I guess, yeah, the, the previous artist was Javid Tabatabai. And yeah, I think that's a good spot to wrap this video up. Uh, let me know what you thought of this. And if you're watching after the live stream ended, definitely let me know in a comment below um, if you want to see more of these. I think I'll kind of intersperse them in between other live streams where I do painting demos and you know more of the usual stuff. Uh, maybe more critiques. You know, uh, it's fun to react, but it's not. It's not like my genre completely. So it's fun, but I I do want to keep the and I guess that you say that there is some educational value to that. But yeah, I want most of my content to be my own purely, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but in any case, be sure to tune into Saturday's video. I think you'll enjoy it. If you're looking to paint large formats like we've seen today, um, I think you'll enjoy it. I have like 10 tips for you to paint big formats. Um, it's on the one hand, very challenging, but it's also very rewarding. And the results can be fantastic if you are uh, if you know what you're doing. And it doesn't even require that much experience necessarily, but more like knowing what to do in advance to to set, set up the variables in your favor, you know. Uh, but yeah, in any case, here's me. Let's stop sharing the screen. And I will end this by thanking you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to check out the Three Amigos video we started with, check it out. It's the first link in the description box. Um, if you want to check out the courses, everything is everything is in the description box below. Plus my materials, you can find it there in the freewatercolor.com slash gear. Um, let me put that on the screen for you. There's a lot of people ask me about that. That's the address um, you want to check it out if you want to see my art supplies. And if you buy through my links there, I make a small commission, which is super duper neat. Uh, thank you, Patricia. Thank you, John. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everyone. Uh, watching videos with you and getting quick answers for our comments. Yeah, that's interesting. It's like um, I can I can kind of interpret what's going on because sometimes the technique is subtle. You know, uh, have a nice day, you too, Jesse. Uh, thank you, Daiji. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Olivier. Thank you, John. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everyone. Much, much appreciated. And yeah, one more thing I will mention is this is the amount of people who bought the frustration-free watercolor course. And this is the amount of people who bought the watercolor realism course. So, and that's still a lot. This <laughs> is just so you know. So I'm super gr uh, grateful and, and pleased with the launch. But just there are many people who still haven't. So if you want to paint realistic watercolor, be sure to check that out. Kind of a final note. Um, I think it's a really useful one. Uh, but in any case, thank you so, so much. I'll see you on Saturday's video. Take care, and we'll talk soon. Mm.